Hi guys and welcome back to the Storm and Cellar. Today I'm going to give you my thoughts on the new war movie Devotion, which is based on a true story about two naval aviators in the Korean War. One was Lieutenant Tom Hudner and the other Ensign Jesse Brown. Uh, their bond and friendship really developed into quite a historic event. By the way, you might remember Hudner played by Glenn Powell as Hangman in the uh, Top Gun Maverick movie. Before we go any further, uh, a little bit about the F4U Corsair. Now during World War II, it had a 11 to 1 kill ratio. That's 2,140 aircraft kills versus 189 losses, which is incredible. It was made famous by Major Pappy Boeington of the Black Sheep Squadron VMF-214 and was quite the dogfighting aircraft. So let's take a look at some of the scenes uh, of the movie and I'll give you my thoughts on them. You're the only person I ever met belonged in the sky. Just remember you belong down here with us too, okay? Here you have the uh, Corsairs drilling down on its targets with uh, hellish flak coming back up at them. The movie is centered around the Battle of the Chosen Reservoir in Korea. During the Korean War, the Corsairs were primarily used as ground attack aircraft versus fighter aircraft uh, during uh, the World War II. And they operated at extremely low altitudes, which made them very susceptible to this kind of ground fire. The commanding officer called you one of the best pilots he's ever seen. It must be hard being the a naval aviator. Absolutely. The Corsair was very difficult to land on a carrier. It was called the instant eliminator. So when the ship landing signal officer, or LSO, gave Brown the wave off, you'd better have a hell of a good reason to land and not go around. The whole world's looking different. Did you ever think that you'd be in a squadron with a colored aviator? Lieutenant Tom Hudner, Jesse Brown. It's good to meet you. Although all of the black uh, Tuskegee Airmen flew with the Army Air Force during World War II, blacks were not integrated into the services until 26 July of 1948 when President Truman issued Executive Order 9981. Instant Jesse Brown then became the first black naval aviator in history. We're taking a slight detour on the way home. Say again? What are you going to find out about your wingman cruising at 10,000 feet, Lieutenant? Put him in a little bit of trouble. Who knows? We might get a peek at who he really is. It appears that Brown was making some judgment calls that really should have been left up to his flight lead on this. It really is. The North Koreans came pouring over the 38th parallel. If our guys need help, and we're up. We knew this day might come. Yeah, it doesn't make it any easier. The most important thing is this. We bring Everyone, home. Mistakes get us killed. Can't tell you how many times people have told me to give up quick. Anson Brown was a real go-getter in life. From a small boy in Mississippi, he always wanted to fly. He went on to Ohio State University where he uh, unloaded boxcars at night to pay for his tuition. He finally joined the Navy ROTC to help defray the cost of college, and when he graduated, he was commissioned an ensign in the United States Navy and was accepted into flight school, where he was featured on the cover of Life magazine, which is pretty incredible. Die even. There's one who can't always do what you're told. It's a mag! If I did, I wouldn't be here. 
What do you want me to do? Just be my wingman. The Korean War was the real beginning of the jet age, and the Corsair was no match for the MiG-15s. Unless you could catch the MiG in a turning fight where the Corsair could turn inside him, hey, you were pretty well toast. The real battle in all of life is being someone that people can count on. Show off. The Corsair's loadout or weapons carried could uh, a combination of uh, cannons, napalm, iron bombs, and unguided rockets. Okay, I love war movies, especially when they're based on a true story. And this one really hits the target. So for those of you who are not planning on seeing this movie, I have some additional historical information at the end. So don't go there if you don't want to know what happened in real life. In the meantime, I hope you liked this short reaction video. If you did, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to help it grow. Also, I'd like to hear what you think about by leaving your comments uh, in the section below. So until next time, make sure your takeoff and landings equal. Are you still here? Okay. If so, there was some serious bravery from those two naval aviators. After Ensign Brown was hit by ground fire, he crashed onto the side of a mountain. Lieutenant Hudner, wanting to save his friend and wingman, Force crash landed his Corsair on the mountain near Brown. He stayed with Brown until the rescue helicopter arrived, where it was determined uh, they couldn't get Brown out of the cockpit before he died and had to leave his body there to keep from being captured by the uh, North Koreans. Brown's uh, final words were to tell his wife, Daisy, that he loved her and that he died. Of course, and Typical military tradition, his squadron mates gave him what was called a warrior's funeral. Seven Corsairs flown by his squadron mates flew over his dead body and aircraft and dropped napalm on him while singing hymns. Lieutenant Hudner, who was expecting to be court-martial for his actions, was in fact awarded the Medal of Honor for his heroic actions and Ensign Brown was posthumously awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross, Air Medal, and Purple Heart. Okay, now that about does it. I really appreciate you hanging around to the end, but I still encourage you to go watch Devotion. I know I am.